Three, two, one, go. What's up, guys? Welcome. I just wanted to make a blender, uh, a backdrop, like a simple photographer's backdrop. And as you know, I'm not great in Blender, but, and I'm using a MacBook Pro, which isn't optimal, but you gotta do what you gotta do. So, I have a box, and first I'm just gonna enlarge the box. Because I feel like everything I make on Blender is just super small. So I'm gonna enlarge the box. And right now I'm in object mode. I'm going to press tab to go to edit mode and then you can sort of edit your shape. So the first thing I'm going to do is press one. It gives us this like sort of orthographic view. And then I'll use the little arrows to move it up to that red line. So I want that to be the horizon line. Okay. And if you're on a Mac, you have to press shift and two fingers like pan, uh, pans. I think that's panning. And then if you're not pressing shift, then it moves like this, like the turntable or whatever. I just woke up, but I've been, I'm always excited to make new videos and try stuff. So first we need to take the nodes to break this box into almost a backdrop. So these are nodes, edges, faces. This is a node, this is an edge, and this is a face. So we'll go with nodes, we'll press this one, and I think shift, press the other one, and then X to delete vertices. And then we have something like this. I'm gonna go back over to my I'm going to select it. Actually, I have to go, I have to press tab to get back into object mode. And now I'm just going to stretch it this way. I'll stretch it this way too. So now I just want to bevel this edge. So I'm going to press tab to go back into edit mode and then press edge. So now I can tap that edge, tap that edge. And these two, there's bevel right here. So we'll just hit bevel and then we'll pull this yellow tab to get our bevel there. Maybe we'll make it a little bit bigger. And there's a way, I think you can uh, use, sometimes you can use two fingers to, to and slide and it makes the sections, but we need sections in here. So before you do anything else, go down to this black bar on the bottom. And then segments, and then you can make some segments there. So I think that should be more than enough. So now I'll tap back on it. Hit tab. So now we're back into object mode. And I'm going to double click, not double click, I'm going to two finger click and shade smooth and now it's it's uh, smooth oh, that's actually quite big compared to the camera <laughs> that's okay we'll make it work so let's add so now I'm just gonna do shift a and add a cube And I'll use my tools over here to make it bigger. I'll use the resize tool. So I'll make it a little bit bigger. Press one again. Whoop. Hmm. Did I make the... Did I not make this straight? I might have to rotate my my backdrop. So let's take the backdrop and rotate it. When I press one, I want it to be the front. And I actually don't know how to turn it right at 90 degrees. Actually, you can do everything manually. 
this little tab over here, rotation, um, what minus 90, that might move it, let's see if I hit one, there we go, but it's not in the center, I'm not really that good at math, <laughs> figuring out which numbers, okay, so I think if I put this at zero, it's going to move it to the center. Scale it down a little bit. Might have been overzealous with the... Okay, so now we have our box here. And I might just keep it a hard, the hard box. But just for the sake of keeping it clean, I'm going to move this up to... Actually, I probably could have just squashed it first. I like to shoot things in orthographic. The, rend the renders just usually look better. And, and sometimes when I put the character on the floor and I use the orthographic camera, uh, you wind up seeing underneath the canvas. If you're looking like at this angle, then you see too much underneath. So at least here you can, I can go like that and then I have a lot of room on the bottom and this and the character can be in the middle. Okay, so the next thing, I'm gonna press Z and then move up to rendered. And right now we're using Eevee and I think that's probably fine for now. Eevee is the renderer that's not as good as cycles so if you go over here to this little camera this is ev and this is cycles so cycles is always what i export in cycles is super realistic does tons of calculations all the shadows and lights and everything are more realistic ev is not but it's less taxing on the system so for now we'll use it Okay, so I'm going to turn this light off for now. And let's just add, so shift A, and here's how you add a light. So there's a bunch of lights here. Mm, I think I want to do, maybe we'll do point lights. And I'll move it up. Back. up a bit more and you can't even really see it so let's go over to the light options down here anytime you touch a material or a light you use around here is where you would um, change the color of it and things like that so if I touch the light and then go down here you see now it's a little light and these are our options so I'm going to change this to 100 And let's go through the other. Here's spotlight. I'm trying to think of what photographers' lights usually look like. You can use this little blue arrow to raise and lower the beam, but why don't I see any of the light? 200. Oh, I can see it a little bit now. Radius. Let's move the radius up. Sometimes I just like, you kind of have to just play with these. Uh, oh, and blend. Let's raise the blend here. And your size. So you can do all this. I'm going to make this 1,000. See what we're doing. There we go. So I don't mind the radius. I just want the cone to be a bit smaller, I think. And I want the blend, I think, to be all the way. So we'll move it up. Maybe out a little bit. And I'll just keep raising it brighter until I kind of get 
what I want. And what I think I want is like maybe three of these lights. So I'm gonna press Control D. And before I do anything, I'm gonna just gonna hit X so it stays on the X axis and then I can move it over like this. I'll take this one again, uh, or Shift D. I might've said Control, Shift D. Shift D is in David. And then I'll hit X so it stays on the X axis. And I'll put this light here. All right. So now we also have, if you look at this little world here, this is kind of like our environment. So I'm gonna take the color and just raise it up so it's brighter. Maybe around halfway. And these lights, we'll go back to the options here. I think I want to make these brighter. So maybe like 4,000. <clears> now that we have more light in the room, maybe 5,000. It's probably a way to like link them all, but I don't know how to do that. Okay, so let me save this. Save as photo backdrop. So we'll save that. Okay, so now we have our, I guess we should put something here so if you want, you can always just add, uh, we'll add a, a sphere. Press one, we'll move the sphere up. Okay, so now we have our sphere. And this is our camera here. This is our camera view. So when you click on it, you can press zero and it goes to the camera view. If yours doesn't do that, if you're on a Mac like I am, I think you have to go into the options. So just go up here to edit, preferences, and oh, what is it? I think it's input. Oh yeah, <clears throat> go to input and then keyboard and emulate numpad. So if you're on a MacBook Pro, like a, a laptop, then just go to preferences, input, emulate numpad. Because we don't have a, num a number pad on our on MacBooks, so. And you don't have to hit save. I think it just automatically changes whatever settings you make in the preferences. So, so now you should be able to hit zero and it'll go to the camera view. So once you scroll out, it kind of gets out of the camera view. Um, but for your camera, the same thing, it pops up over here and you can adjust all of the things here. Uh, the other thing that makes a difference, so you have your camera, but this is like your main blender camera. It all gets very confusing. This camera up here is where you put like cycles or EV and there's all these options. So for me, that gets kind of confusing because there's a lot of the same options for the camera and then there's other options here. So, you know, what takes precedent? Um, hard to really know. Um, but for now, we're using EV, and you can actually tick all of these. Ambient occlusion, bloom, um, subsurface scattering should be on, screen sp space reflections, refraction. You can turn all that on. Uh, even though we're not gonna use EV, uh, if you want to play with these or make them like, you know, just play with them, you can put those on. But I don't think they matter for cycles, which is what we're going to use it for. Because I think those are on by default in cycles. Alright, so for the camera, we're going to use the same tools and just kind of 
use our little gizmo here to sort of make it press control or command Z to go back uh, and also if you the gizmo in nomad sculpt it's easy to you can press align and it will align it to the world and that's the same thing as global here so global will just it's not going to move it how the camera is these will just stay where they are but you can hit local for example if I want it to stay just where it is but just tilt it up you can hit local and I also find it easier to see what I'm seeing now which is the solid and if you um, if you press Z the rendered wireframe solid material preview so I'm in solid actually I think I was in rendered go to solid actually rendered it is okay because I'm an EV so it's fine <clears throat> in cycles in cycles I usually have one half solid and then I go to animation up here and I have that and I have a window here and I have this window I like to be able to see the camera over here so this one is always rendered and what the camera sees anytime I scroll out with two fingers it always jumps out of the camera so then I have to keep pressing zero to go back in camera I guess now it's not going to do it there we go I don't like that so now what I can see that this is a bit too small so I'll just go over here make sure I'm on my camera pull the tools out with these little arrows and you can do it this way you can like move the camera in and out this way you can also go to the camera and change the focal length and you can move it but I like to be able to also see what I'm doing. So yeah, something like that. I'm going to press Control D and then X. I'm going to I'm going to double or two finger press and set as active camera. And up here, I'm just going to change this to front camera, front cam. I'm going to, I'm going to put C in front, C front cam, because I want them, I want the cameras to be next to each other, and I hate that it puts them in alphabetical order. I'm sure you can change it, but yeah, there you go. Oh, but now I just, I just moved them. Yeah, I see. That's where that's where it gets confusing. So now we're in this camera, and this is what we see over here. So I'm going to swivel it and move it over. I want it to be in the front. Again, I'm sure there's a way to do that a lot quicker and less manually, but I don't know how to do it. So for the rotation... Rotate it this way, so I think this can be zero. Maybe all these can be zero. Let's see. Nope. Okay, so that's almost straight. Zero. So I'm just setting those to zero, so that looks pretty good. Okay, so I think the top one is the X. Okay, that makes sense. So that looks good. I'm just going to slide this over. Maybe I should make this zero as well. It looks like it's the X. So I'm just seeing what numbers move. And that should be perfect. It should be perfectly centered. Okay, so the background is looking good. I kind of wish there was a bit more spread on the floor right behind him. So I think I'm going to tap on the light and then hit sh hold shift and tap on the other ones. 
and then use this green to kind of move them forward a bit. Maybe even point them back a little bit. Okay, so something like that. So now let's go to this camera. And let's change it to cycles and just take a look. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I'm just going to check the lights and just make sure. So spot size, if I make this bigger, how does that look? I think I like 75. So I'm going to change these to 75. And Nomad, you can select them both and do it, but I don't think it works here. I think it it seems like it's going to do both, but then it just does whatever the last one is. And there's no indication that you haven't done the other one. So that looks pretty good. So of course you can make them brighter move them around as you need. So I'm going to save this. So now we go in, you can tell our sphere. So I'm, I'm just going to two finger press and where is shade smooth? Oh, maybe I'm not. Yeah, there you go. Shade smooth. All right. So now let's add a light for this. And let's change the material. Actually, let's not change the material yet. But let's bring back that light that we... We bring back this light. I'm pressing both the eye and the camera. The camera is so when you hit render, it does render. Otherwise, it won't render. And you'll just think it renders. I actually wish I could turn this off. I wish that there was just one, one button. Uh, let's see. Lights. Sync selection. Yeah, I don't know how to, I wonder if I can disable in renders globally. I wonder if I can just turn, keep this off. Hide in viewport. Okay, so maybe, so let's do a little test. So if I hide it here and then I enable that option, I wonder if it's also gonna be hidden. No, it's still on. Hmm. Anyway, so now you can see our area. Is a point light or an arrow? This is a point light. Okay, so this is a point light. And I'm going to go back up to global up here. That way I can just move it left and right. So now you can see our light. So maybe something like this is good for the overhead. Okay, so we have that light. I wonder if I can join these lights. I wonder if I can select them all, right click. No, I can't join. You can also press Command P. Let's see if I can press Command P while my cursor is here. Command P, object, keep transform. Oh, there we go. So I just joined them all. I think. No, nope, it looks like <clears throat> it looks like they're joined, but they're still individual. Okay. And here's the light that we just made. Okay, so let's make a new light. Oops. So I'll, I'll go here, Shift A, light, and let's make an air area light. So we'll move it up, 
over, maybe around the same spot. So we can leave it a square. Let's change the power to 100. And we'll raise, we'll increase the size. Let's make it a disc. So now it's a round disc. Okay, I think everything else is good. Let me see if I can, all right. So yeah, this looks pretty good. You can, obviously you can tilt it a little bit towards your model or however you want to do it. I think that looks pretty good. Let's see if I press Z and render here. So now let's raise the power up to 300. There we go. So I think that looks pretty good. And remember, of course, you can go here and make it a little bit darker or lighter generally. You know, you can, or you can just turn this off. Like if I do remove, then it's much darker. Press Command Z to undo. So let's save. So then of course we can press the sphere and we can change the, like if we want it to be a different material, just go down here and you can add new and principle BSDF is just the default. So that's just normal. You can press it and you have all these glass, you know, all these other things that get very confusing. But here's your base color. So if you wanted to change the base color, you can. If you want to make it a uh, subsurface, you would do that here. You can change the subsurface color. And then you would just have to increase the subsurface here. Like that. And then here, roughness, if I want it to be glossy. Bring that down. And then, yeah, and if you wanted to glow, then you would tap here and you would do, you would raise this up. And then you would change the emission. And you make it bright, and you have to change uh, change the saturation to kind of get it the color that you want, something like that. So I'm going to press Z and go back to solid, because I can hear my computer fan. Okay, so I don't think we need an emission. Maybe we'll just make it a little bit metallic. So now we can we can see our our little glare. And right now we're looking in the viewport. And the viewport's also over here. <clears throat> Excuse me. So I'm gonna set max samples down to like 20 or 25, maybe 50. That way the computer is not constantly trying to do a thousand uh, frames to make this look clear. It's only doing 50. You can do do noise if you want, but for me, it, it looks less good. I usually just leave it off. And here's your render settings. Max samples. I'm just going to change this to about um, 200. Max samples is the amount of um, the sample is just like it's going to take so many frames and then create the final frame. So if you put a thousand, it's going to look a bit better, but it's going to take a lot longer. All right, so, <clears throat> excuse me. Okay, so I think that's pretty good. I think it looks pretty good. The only thing now is 
see this I like to adjust this light maybe bring it up a little bit higher maybe put it here go back to the light settings maybe increase the size make it look really nice like that you can also change it to like an ellipse increase the size and then you can play with this whether it's like lengthwise or wide wise wide wise and then you <clears throat> then you can just tweak you know just tweak all the numbers so they're what you want. And now let's press Control or Shift D. Is in David. So we just made another light. Let me just drag it over. Say you want another light on this side, but maybe you want a square from the size down. Maybe make it 100 instead of 350. So you can do things like that if you want to put another shape on your sphere, another reflective shape. You can do something like that. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see it here. If I turn this light off and on. Or you can change it to like a point light. Maybe you want to give it a little bit of like color or tint or something. So you can do things like that. I'm going to press uh, Command Z. I think I liked the square. Yeah, I think I liked the square. But I'm going to move it over. over a little bit more. Maybe I'll make it a rectangle instead. And I want it to be thinner. So I'm just trying to look here. Oop. Maybe I'll go back to the camera and try out to know what denoise. See if that helps. Want it to be thinner. There we go. So now it's a bit thinner. Not sure if spread is doing anything. But I think that looks pretty good. So yeah, then of course you can like can spin it, do things to adjust how it's affecting our scene. Yeah, I'll make this 60 or even 40. And maybe I'll make this one a little bit brighter. Now I'm just going to change this back to, you can hear my computer now. I'm going to, I'm going to turn uh, Denoise off. I'll save. It looks like our box is not quite to the ground. It's a little bit above, so I'm just going to select the sphere and the box. And the little arrow symbol. And I just want to move them down a smidge. 
There we go. So we'll just save in this window. I'm just going to hit zero. So I have my camera. Whoop. Zero again. That looks good. And when we export, so we're here. Here's our export settings. So these look good. Max samples is at 200 down here. Remember, this is the viewport and this is the actual render. See? This is the render. And what else? Oh, and here's the output settings. So not only is this the render settings, which feels like it's rendering as output, but this is the actual output. So this is the size. Don't change these or else it'll be like stretched more or less in one direction. We go down here and I usually do PNG. Um, and here's the out here's the the output. And things go to a temporary folder, and this is kind of confusing. Um, you can change this, but it doesn't really matter because when once the image comes up, you can save it. But I'm just going to put this to downloads and blender, and just hit accept. That way, if I if I accidentally something goes to a temporary folder, it's just going to go to my blender folder, and I'm not going to lose it because that happened to me in the beginning. All right, I think this looks good, so let's do a render. So now we just go up here to render and uh, render image. And you see our image is rendering here. But yeah, I, I've been wanting to make just like a simple photographer's backdrop. It's actually a little bright. I might be able to bring the ambient light down a little bit. So it has a little bit more of the that backdrop feel, that curved feel. Um, but generally the lights are good. And I, I like to present little characters. So I'd like to present all my little characters on a little pedestal like this. Like with framing just like this. Uh, and maybe I'll set two cameras you know one camera that has is, is wide if i want to add it to my videos and the other camera just like a horizontal camera uh for when i want to post on you know social media and stuff is usually more or more vertical i should say um but all of those i would just go up obviously and just make a new camera and just change the actually now that i'm thinking about it I don't think I can have two cameras with different resolutions. I'm actually not sure. Because the resolution doesn't really lie with the camera. It lies with this instead of the actual camera. But again, that's why, you know, I find it, I can find it very, very confusing. Extremely confusing. Okay, so here we have our render. And it's quite small, but I don't know why it looks so bad. I mean, it doesn't look bad. It looks okay. But. Make sure that I, yeah, it is cycles. This is all right. Denoise. Let's go to our render. I don't think it's going to do anything to the render, but. But yeah, I mean, that's our render. Uh, usually I would do it bigger. And I don't know why the quality looks so bad, but I think it's only because I only did 200 samples. So I'd have to do some more some more tests. Usually I do, I do everything in 4K, and it looks, uh, it looks way better. So we have this render. I'll save it, and I'll upload this to the video. Oops. And I'm also going to... I'll render at a, at a higher number. So let's go back to our render, our max samples, and we'll do, um, we'll do a thousand. And let's go back to our animation. So we'll do a thousand and we'll also do, yeah, we'll just do it and see how it looks. 
so I'll come back when this is done. It still doesn't look great. So I think this means that I just have something wrong with my my lighting, I think. Let's go to the camera view and zoom in. So now that I'm zoomed in, I can see that it's really bright around here. So it might just be that our environment is too bright or the lights. So if I go here back to our world, See if I bring this all the way down. We still have that bright white ring. So I'm going to hit Control Z or uh, Command Z. So it might just be these lights. I thought I linked them so I could just select them all easily. Select, select hierarchy. Okay, I guess that worked. So let's see what happens if I move these up. Or if I move them back. Okay, we're still getting that really super bright ring. So I don't think, so it might not be these lights. So let's turn this off. So I just tapped it and then it should be highlighted up here. The area light, still see white behind. So let's go here. Still see white. Okay, so now I'm gonna turn off everything all of these lights. Okay, so we're still seeing the white glow. Let's make sure I don't have any sort of illumination. Okay, I don't. Let's see if I move the background back that does anything. No. Command Z. Alright, let's tap on this. There's no emission. Let's turn subsurface off. Let's go to our environment and turn this all the way down. Let's turn our lights back on. Is this? Oh. So here's an area light and another area light. Oh. So I have a lot of lights here. So let's take a look at how. So this one's 500. This one's 40. So that's really low. This light is super bright. So let's bring this down. Let's try 400. And if I think I don't want these to reflect these lights, I think multiple importance. Yeah, you can turn that off. So I'm gonna go here, turn off multiple importance. I just don't want these lights shining on the ball. Oh, 
And we have this little dot here too. I'm not actually sure what that is from. It looks like a point light. Let's see if we can find that. Okay, so that's... This light is at 5,000. That's really bright. Okay, so let's um, let's turn this light off, and let's use let's use this light here. So I think that was the. Let's label these. So this is the square light. This is the. L ellipse. I'm going to start naming my lights with L in front of them. This one is the L <coughs> point. And where's that other light at that I just had? Okay, so we'll just go to the ellipse and we can raise the power of this to a thousand. size a little bit bigger. I'll tilt it back a little bit. So we'll see how this we'll see how this renders. Yeah, let's see how this renders. So let's go back to we're at a thousand. Let's go back to two hundred first. And we'll see how that looks. Uh, it's a little shaky, but I think uh, it looks a little better. Uh, and of course, there's there's tons of things that I can continue to tweak with this, but I think it looks uh, I think it looks pretty good. So again, the only thing that I might change when I do actual renders is change this here to 4K. So I might do that, and endlessly I'll tweak tweak the lights. Um, but I like, I, you know, I like tweaking lights, so that makes sense. All right, but that's pretty much a simple photographer's backdrop. I think it looks, uh, I think it looks all right. Well, interesting. Is this what our render looked like? Oh yeah, okay. All right, well hopefully that, hopefully that was helpful for those of you using a Mac and trying to get into Blender. I know it's hard, I wish I could show like what my hands are doing, but it's just, it's kind of impossible to do. Um, I guess I can figure out how to do um, like my keys on the, on the screen. So maybe I'll try to figure that out um, for a future future ones but hopefully I explained it all right but you know if you get lost you can just add some questions in the in the comments and I'll I'll try to help again I don't know blender very well there's tons there's a million other blender tutorials but when I was looking no one was doing it on a Mac and everyone just goes really fast and they just use tons of shortcuts and it's just like it was always annoying so that's why I wanted to make this keep drawing keep sculpting I'll see you all in the next video. Noticed um, this box here is actually a nice like grayish and I never put a material on it. 
So that might be just affecting how everything is looking because I'm assuming that this is white when this is actually gray. So what I can do is take this and add a material. So here's the base color and turn it white. Again, everything, all this is right here. So now that's white and then we can make it, if we wanna make this glossy, you know, you can do that. So that uh, will obviously change how the lighting looks and how the lighting bounces and all of that stuff. So I just wanted to, to add that in. And also, you can see I took the lights away from in the back here because they weren't really doing much. But what I might do is take the backdrop and change, make it a little bit gray. So if I make the backdrop gray, and I guess I can make this gray as well. But if I make those gray, then I can probably bring back these lights in the back. I think I only have one. Let's see, where is it? Oh, here's the square light. Oh, so it's already on. So I had that light on in the back. And I just put a point light back here. Sort of like this. And I think I might make three point lights instead. Whoops. What, I don't know why I just did that. So control D or shift D, is it shift D? I don't even know. Shift D is duplicate, shift D. But anyway, I'm gonna keep playing with this because I'm addicted. But I just wanted to add that in that when you add a shape, you do have to add, you do have to add like for the box, you do have to add a material. And you can also save materials. Like let's just say this is gray-ish. So you can write that in. And then if you want to make them the same color, then you go here and you can just choose gray-ish. But now it's reflective as well, as you can see. All right, I think that's officially it.